Welcome to the Zions Bank Economic Update. I'm Deb Speed and joining me is Robert Spenlove to talk about the current state of our nation's economy. Robert, why don't we start with the jobs market? What does the employment situation look like right now for the U.S.? So we're seeing a pretty good market in the, in the job market. Our employment for April grew right around 160,000 jobs at the national level. That's roughly in line with the growth that we've seen for the past several years, actually. We've seen growth right around that 150 to 250,000 jobs per month range. Uh, that's a sign of a good economy, not, not the kind of strong growth that you would see in a really accelerating economy. Uh, in, in, a, in a very strong economy, you'd see maybe as many as 400 to 500,000 jobs a month. But we're also not seeing the job losses that would indicate uh, an economy that was weakening or going into recession. So it's a good sign. That's good. And you mentioned the job losses. What about the unemployment rate? The unemployment rate actually is doing really well. We're at 5 percent. 5 percent is a critical level for the unemployment rate. It's in economics what we refer to as full employment. So it's that level where those people who want to find jobs should be able to find the right jobs for them and employers should be able to find the right employees for their labor needs. So that 5% is important. It's also one of the goals that the Fed is aiming at when they're looking at fiscal policy. So there's been some concern over wage growth or lack thereof. Have we seen any movement there? Yeah, so for the past few years actually, we've seen wage growth that's been suboptimal. The goal, what we want to see with our wage growth is right around the long-term average, and the long-term average for, for wage growth has been right around 2.5%. So uh, the, the good news is that in April, we've seen a little bit of an acceleration in our wage growth. Wages are now right around $25.53 an hour. That's the average for the country. And this represents a growth of about 2.5% over the last year. So while we've seen wage growth over the last several years below that long-term average, we're now returning to that average, which is a good sign of a, a strengthening economy. So that's a pretty decent jobs situation, but let's talk about inflation because that has been below optimal levels as well. Why don't you tell exactly. us about that? Exactly. So what, what we're seeing is when you see employment growth grow, uh, employment growing strongly, when you see the unemployment rate dropping, we're starting to see that wage growth. And because we see that wage growth, we're starting to see a little bit of an acceleration in our inflation which is something we really need to see. For, for too long, our inflation has been, again, below the optimal level. Now, the Fed really likes to look at two indicators of inflation, the consumer price index and what's called the personal consumption expenditure, or PCE. Both the CPI and the PCE came in around, CPI came in at 1.1% in April, PCE came in at 0.8% in March. So they're a little bit below the 2% level that the Fed would like to see. However, when you strip out food and energy, which tend to be more volatile, uh, CPI came in just above 2% and PCE came in just below 2%. So we're seeing the core of those two rates right around that level that the Fed wants to see. So what do you think the Fed is going to do given all of these indicators? The Fed uh, since December has been indicating that they would like to continue uh, increasing interest rates. In fact, in December, they said that they would increase rates by four, uh, four times by 1% in 2016. However, uh, as 2016 progressed, the economic conditions and the fundamentals weren't there for them to be able to justify an increase. And so they did not increase it uh, in April. However, the probability of them increasing them in June is starting to increase because of the, the stronger economic conditions. And so when uh, the Fed minutes were released from their last meeting, uh, they actually showed a, a greater willingness to increase rates in the June meeting, and uh, Fed futures markets have started to increase the probability of a rate increase. And then we could also see another increase later in the year, uh, probably around the December time frame. What about global headwinds? Are they going to keep that into consideration? Yeah, that's one of the big problems, one of the big issues that the Fed is always being faced with. Uh, our country does not uh, exist on its own. There's other things going on. One of the biggest issues is the possibility of a British exit from the European Union. They call this the Brexit. And that vote will be taking place right around the same time as the Fed meets in June. We also have continued weakness in China. We have uh, the energy sector continuing to be uh, uh, 
there's continues to be some level of uncertainty in the energy markets. And then we've also got central banks around the world that are dropping their rates or even going negative, which pr produces pressure on the Fed. So I guess we'll just wait and see. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Robert. Thank you for joining us for this economic update. For more information and analysis, please visit zionsbank.com economy.